Israel's proposed incursion into Rafah has significantly strained relations with its primary ally, the United States, marking one of the most contentious periods in their diplomatic history. The US has repeatedly highlighted the plight of Palestinians and has urged Israel to keep the safety of civilians as their top priority. We have, uh, in the past, um, uh, to be as careful, precise, and discriminate as they can here, um, uh, so that they are not putting innocent lives at, at greater risk than they already are. Uh, but we're watching this very closely. Despite escalating pressure from its close ally, the United States and other global stakeholders, Israel mandated additional evacuations in Gaza's southern city of Rafah, compelling tens of thousands more residents to evacuate. This directive underscores Israel's determination to broaden its military operations into what is perceived as Hamas's last resort. Our war is against Hamas, not against the people of Gaza. Israel Defense Forces is continuing its precise operation against Hamas in Rafah. As part of our efforts to achieve an enduring defeat of Hamas and bring all our hostages home. The exodus of Palestinians from Gaza's last refuge accelerated Sunday as Israeli forces pushed deeper into the southern city of Rafah. Israel also pounded the territory's devastated north, where some Hamas militants have regrouped in areas the military said it had cleared months ago. The situation is very, very dangerous. We could not sleep at night as there was artillery shelling as well as rockets. The conditions are very difficult. There are no people in the street and food products are scarce. There is no food or water. For now, we are managing but the Jews haven't even entered yet. They have been in the east, eastern Rafah, from the start, and we have nothing here already. Addressing the situation, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken expressed concern over Israel's ability to safeguard the estimated 1.4 million Palestinian civilians in Rafa. U.S. halted bomb shipment to Israel, citing the rising humanitarian crisis in Gaza and inability of Israel to safeguard civilians stuck in the crossfire. Blinken highlighted the absence of what he termed as a credible plan by Israel to ensure the protection of civilians amidst the conflict. So the trajectory right now is that going into to Rafa, even to deal with these remaining battalions, especially in the absence of a plan for civilians, risks doing terrible harm to civilians and not solving the problem. A problem that both of us want to solve, which is making sure Hamas cannot again govern Gaza. Moreover, he cautioned against potential repercussions, warning that an Israeli offensive could inadvertently fuel an insurgency by leaving surviving Hamas fighters to organize resistance within the southern Gazan city. Israel's on the trajectory potentially to inherit an insurgency with many armed Hamas left, or if it leaves a vacuum filled by chaos, filled by anarchy, and probably refilled by Hamas. As per Palestinian reports, there was significant Israeli bombardment overnight in the urban Jabalia refugee camp and surrounding regions in northern Gaza, an area that has faced substantial isolation by Israeli forces over an extended period. This escalation occurs amidst UN officials' alarming declaration of a full-blown famine gripping the region. Residents further disclosed Israeli airstrikes and artillery fire targeting the Zaytun area east of Gaza City where ongoing clashes between troops and militants have persisted for over a week. Urgent calls have been issued for tens of thousands of individuals to seek refuge in nearby safer areas. Moreover, in central Gaza, reports from staff at the Alexa Hospital in Deir al-Bala have confirmed casualties resulting from an Israeli strike, tragically claiming the lives of four individuals. Neighboring Egypt issued its strongest objection yet to the Rafa offensive, saying it intends to formally join South Africa's case at the International Court of Justice, alleging Israel is committing genocide in Gaza, an accusation Israel rejects.
A limited operation there has expanded in recent days, forcing some 300,000 people to flee and drawing warnings from Egypt, where an official said it is putting the country's decades-old peace treaty with Israel at risk. The Egyptian-Israeli peace agreement is a strategic choice that Egypt made more than four decades ago and is considered the main pillar in the region for achieving peace and security. The agreement has mechanisms that are activated to deal with any violations that may have occurred. There are special mechanisms to deal with these violations, if they exist, and this matter takes place within a technical framework and within the framework of the Military Liaison Committee. United Nations Human Rights Chief Volker Turk said in a statement that he cannot see how a full-scale invasion of Rafa can be reconciled with international humanitarian law. I can see no way that the latest evacuation orders, much less a full assault in an area with an extremely dense presence of civilians, can be reconciled with the binding requirements of international humanitarian law and with the two sets of binding provisional measures ordered by the International Court of Justice. Gaza has been left without a functioning government, leading to a breakdown in public order and allowing Hamas's armed wing to reconstitute itself even in the hardest hit areas. On Sunday, Hamas touted attacks against Israeli soldiers in Rafah and near Gaza City. Israel has yet to offer a detailed plan for post-war governance in Gaza, saying only that it will maintain open-ended security control over the enclave of about 2.3 million Palestinians. Internationally mediated talks over a ceasefire and hostage release appeared to be at a standstill. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, in a Memorial Day speech, vowed to continue fighting until victory in memory of those killed in the war with or without its allies. I say to the leaders of the world, no amount of pressure, no decision by any international forum will stop Israel from defending itself. But in Tel Aviv, hundreds of protesters stood outside military headquarters and raised candles during a minute-long siren marking the day's start, demanding an immediate ceasefire deal to return the hostages. We are here every day to accompany the families in their plight for the hostages, for asking from our government to release them as soon as possible. Every day that passes is a matter of life or death. Them. Netanyahu has rejected post-war plans proposed by the United States for the Palestinian Authority, which administers parts of the Israeli-occupied West Bank, to govern Gaza with support from Arab and Muslim countries. Those plans depend on progress toward the creation of a Palestinian state, which Israel's government opposes. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has reiterated the urgent need for an immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. He emphasized the precarious situation in Rafah, stressing that it stands on a knife's edge amid the looming possibility of an Israeli offensive into the southern city. I reiterate my appeal for the government of Israel and the leadership of Hamas to demonstrate political courage and spare no effort to reach agreement to stop the bloodshed and to free the hostages. The situation in Rafa is on a knife's edge as airstrikes continue throughout southern Gaza. Over one million Palestinians, half of whom are children, have crowded in the Rafa government for shelter. Global attention is focused on the Israeli government and Hamas leadership, awaiting a resolution to months of conflict.